Alright, so we have laid out the UVs for half of the body, as you can see right here. Now, what we're going to do next is that we are going to duplicate this guy. And once we duplicate it, we are going to scale it on the negative X. And I will explain why we do that. And then we are going to delete the history, freeze its transformation. And when that happens, the UV shells tend to flip. And I'll explain why that happens and how to fix it. So let's just get started. I'm going to select this guy right here. I'm going to go to Edit, Delete by Type History. And then I'm going to go to Modify, Freeze Transformation. If I hit the W key, notice that my pivot point is on the 0x, 0y, and 0z. You can see it better right here. Now let's say, for example, that your pivot point was somewhere else, right? If I center the pivot by going to Modify Center Pivot, well, the way that you edit the pivot point for an object is that you hold the letter D and notice that our manipulator has changed in shape. This is the new edit pivot for Maya 2016. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to hold the X key so that I get a snap to grid, as you can see right here on the very top. And then I'm just going to move the manipulator down and then move it to the X, Y, Z of zero. Let me go to my perspective view so you can see it. And there it is. And to get out of edit center pivot, I will hit D again. You can also hit the insert key. So let's go back to the front view. Now we are going to duplicate this character right here. And uh, to make things easier, I'm going to hit five so we can get the regular shader instead of the uh, textures. And again, you can enable and disable that right here. So if we go to edit and duplicate, notice that there are no options for this. Use a straight duplicate. As soon as I duplicate, we get one mesh on top of the other one. You can double check this by going to this icon right here. So you can bring the outliner and the perspective and notice that we have two meshes. The second mesh was the newly created mesh. You can also go to the outliner by going to windows and outliner. So let me go back to the perspective and UV editor. I'm going to go back to my front view. And again, the trick is to scale this character, the duplicate on the X. So if I hit R for scale and I scale it on the X, you will notice that if I go down to negative one, right? And I'm going to go to my channel box, select the scale movement we did and retype negative one. This is a perfectly mirrored copy of our original. Now, the same thing that I did for the original, if I select my character right here and I go to edit, delete by type history, right? Everything will be fine. As soon as I go to freeze transformation by going to modify freeze transformation, what will happen is that our UVs, instead of having this blue color right here, and I will select the UV shells and move them to the side so you can, and I can use my left and right and up and down arrow keys to move them to a different coordinate. So here they are. I want you to notice that as soon as I hit freeze transformation and let me go to object mode, select the mesh, right? I will reset the X scales from negative one to one like so, but my UV shells have been flipped. That is why there are red. If I select the other mesh, the original half, notice that these UVs are good. So what we have to do is we have to select these shells right here. I'm going to go to right mouse button and select shells. So what we want to do is we want to flip them on the horizontal, on the U. Right below the image menu, inside of your UV editor, you will see these two icons on the top. The first one is flip selected UVs in the U direction, and the other one is in the V direction. So again, we're going to go to flip on U. So now you can select both of the objects. I can go to edit again, delete by type history, and notice that my flip UVs for this left hand side double went away. And again, I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to freeze my transformations. So now we are ready to combine these two meshes and then weld the middle part. And I will explain to you why we have to do that. Notice that the border edge 
of our two halves, it's thicker than the inside edges. That is because I went to display polygons and at the very bottom I have a custom polygon display option. When I go there, this is where we can change all the custom display options for our polygons. We are interested in the border edges and to make your edge width thicker, you go over here and I'm going to type in 10 and I'm going to hit apply. And notice that our border edge got thicker. Remember, border edges are different than our shelf edges, which is found right below the grid button. It's called toggle the display of texture border edges for the active mesh. If I click on this, you will notice that we can see the border edges for our UV shells. I can again go to display polygons, custom polygons display, and if I select border edges, change it to 10 and hit apply, what happens is that my texture edges go away. So the very first thing that we have to do to combine these two halves is exactly that. We have to go to combine. So I'm going to select this side and then shift select the other side. And combine is inside of your polygons shelf right here. It says combine. Combine the selected polygon objects into one single object to allow operations such as merge or face trims. And it's also found under mesh. Combine. Notice that now the two halves have become one piece. Now, this does not mean that the two halves are welded. For example, if I go to my UV editor, you would think that if I selected this shell right here, now that they're one piece, right, that I could, for example, select the edges, right mouse button, of this half, and that it would sew them to the other half. Well, it's not going to do that because my border edge for the two halves are not welded together. Now, if I go to edges, I could go to one of these edges and double click and it will select the border edge. But I don't know if that selection was the border edge for this half or this other half. I'm going to show you a trick that I use that is 100% foolproof. I'm going to hit 4 for wireframe. I'm going to click on the background so nothing is selected. And then I'm going to click and drag these two edges in the front and two edges in the back. I know that there are four edges because if I go to perspective view and I hit F to find, notice that I have two edges right here. One edge will be for this side and the other edge will be for this side and then I have two edges on the front right here. So let me go back to my front view. Now in order to select the contiguous edge, we are going to go to select contiguous edges. This will select the entire border edge loop. Let me hit F so you can see the entire thing. And I know that both the border edge for the left side and the right hand side were selected because I did a click and drag. I'm going to zoom in. Now we need to convert these edges to vertices in order that we can weld them together. So we will go again to select and below contiguous edges you will see this menu right here, convert selections we are going to convert our edges to vertices. As soon as I do that, notice that we go to our vertices component display and that the vertices for the border edges for both sides have been selected. I'm going to disable the border edges by going to display polygons, custom polygons display, and I'm going to deselect border edges and hit apply and close. So we can merge these vertices by going to shift right mouse button and it will take us to the vertices tools. So now we can go to merge vertices options. Here's my merge vertices window and I'm going to go to edit reset. Very important to reset because as you guys notice, I had it to one and that could cause a lot of problems. The default is 0.01. .01. I'm going to hit merge and there you have it. All the vertices were merged together. Now we're going to go to the UV texture editor. What we're going to do next is that we are going to weld all the shells that can be welded together, like the head, the front of the torso, and the back of the torso. The hands and the feet we will leave separate. 